Hello everyone and welcome to game 4 in the series between Cloud and Nurtio. Nurtio spawning as the red zerg, Cloud spawning as the blue Terran, and Cloud spawning on the top left hand side of Shakura's plateau. Meanwhile we have a Nurtio spawning on the top right hand side of Shakura's plateau. Overlord quickly will make its way out into this location here and find Cloud. Now game 3 in the series it was definitely an interesting game. If you guys haven't seen it, I don't want to give anything away. Go ahead and watch that game first. It does have the G3 and it is one number before this particular video. Now, this is Shakura's Plateau. Um, it isn't the official Blizzard one, but I, it is as close to the official Blizzard one as I have seen in quite some time. There's no backdoor rocks leading into your base. The Zelnaga Watchtower is further down over here, unable to reveal this expansion over here and then the destructible rocks are here or here leading into this high ground expansion now nurcio not doing the same strategy that he did last time he is producing drones and we'll see how he plays on shakura's plateau shakura's plateau normally a zerg a zerg favored map as this natural expansion is very very easy to defend meanwhile we can see that cloud opening up with a, a 13 um, barracks over here on the low ground and it looks like he's going to try to wall off against his opponent in order to make sure that there's going to be no early aggression. He wants to be able to expand here normally on Shakura's Plateau. A Zerg player always fast expands but just getting into the head of Cloud based upon what happened last game in game 3 I don't think Cloud can really risk trying to go for an early command center and that early uh, if he goes for another 16 command center that would be a pretty butsy and ballsy move and, and based upon what has happened last time but um cloud then again may try to go for exactly that he does have an upgraded to an orbital command over here he is currently um, training up a marine no bunker in in sight so it looks like it will be at standard command center at 16 it is vulnerable to an, a six or eight pool but i don't think cloud really cares as he's going to quickly scout out with this scv sees that there is a hatchery over here on the low ground and not be too concerned so he's going to see the hatchery know that he he is um, pretty much safe at this stage in the game one marine here scvs would have been brought over in time if he needed to as the drone now coming over here as well we are going to have one marine guarding that ramp making sure that the drone is unable to get up there but the drone will still be able to see that command center as it is being built the marine able to get off of one more shot there you go able to shoot down that drone very very nice stutter step there in order to move during the cooldown of the marines firing in order to shoot down that drone and that's actually much more difficult than it looks usually um usually the drone does get past you if you do are if you even if you are trying to micro and control that marine double refinery now being placed down as well by cloud so cloud getting that double refinery in order to get some that tech lab that all important tech lab and that factory if I know Cloud's build, Cloud does like to use Hellions. So with those Hellions, he may um, try to counter any of those Zerglings. Meanwhile, Nurcio, um, I don't see a Banelings Nest yet or a Roach Warren. He is just simply um, macroing it up, trying to get a very strong economy. There's that factory. One factory now in play. Second factory may be coming in in the near future as well. As that one SCB, oh, able to get back home in time. Um, as the marines were able to escort him up that ramp you can see back over here nurcio has that second queen in play he's going to be able to continue to power drone even further sitting on seven uh, seven additional drones in production 27 drones versus 22 and that number is just going to get larger and larger now at this stage cloud needs to figure out how he's going to put pressure onto um, Nurcio. If he does not put any pressure, then Nurcio is going to simply, simply be able to sit back, relax, and build how he wants and how he likes. And you never want to give Zerg that type of flexibility. If the Zerg are able to build ex according to how they want precisely, they are just going to be able to swarm against you and throw everything at you. And even if you am um, exchanged exchange armies, because of the way Zerg works, Zerg will be able to easily, easily excuse me 
easily easily be able to replenish that heart army if they have saved up enough larva we are going into the hellions with the infernal pre-igniter and we are also seeing the proper counter movement by nurchio going into that roach warren nurchio is adopting his play and doing it very well against cloud those hellions are not going to be able to deal nearly as much damage even if they have that blue flame research um, against those roaches as roaches are not light units the only problem is that we are not upgrading the tier 2, so those roaches are not going to be that fast. Roaches need um, a very strong creep highway and that movement speed upgrade in order to um, catch up to those Hellions. Hellions are just slightly faster, um, only 10% faster against roaches. I think it's about, uh, yeah, 10% faster against roaches. Um, with that movement speed if the roaches have the movement speed while on creep so that definitely is going to help out more creep troopers now being laid down as well so this is going to start to slowly spread even further more hellions being trained and six hellions looking to deal a lot of damage in just a moment we are also going in the siege tanks with siege tech most likely um, following it up allowing allowing for him to sit back and try to fend off against a very large army six hellions now on the move will those hellions get um, a lot of damage done there is already a five roaches on the ramp six roaches on the ramp and i think as those hellions reveal themselves um what was that it looks like those creep tumors had canceled themselves for just a moment um, perhaps these creep tumors should try to push out once more and now oh coming into this location here this hatchery no units down over there and now the roach is trying to get some damage onto those hellions hellions being forced to turn back around knowing that they cannot go toe to toe against a roach hellions just sitting back away we do have a couple overlords as well the roaches are trying to perhaps and get some damage onto those hellions and it looks like the roaches are gonna absorb a little bit of damage but dish back more than those hellions are able to deal and there are also zerglings hiding in the distance so we have a three base play or potential three base play by nurchio nurchio finally transferring some drones from the main base and the glial reconstitution now being researched finally as well so those roaches are going to be able to um, deal even more damage it's just going to be a matter of time there are a couple creep tumors the roaches have a range of four able to get some splash damage onto those units and now just trying to chase once again it doesn't look like they will be able to at all as those um, hellions are moving very very quickly and now the hellions are in the center so those hellions can just simply run by those units there and now oh, gonna, might get flanked there so it looked like he was going to actually get flanked by those roaches and the hellions now moving away and will be able to back off in just a second as siege tanks joining in on that force income wise 66 drones versus 50 scvs cloud needs to um, needs to make a power play and do it quickly perhaps a starport with a hellion drop along the back here would deal enough damage but there are enough overlords to make sure that a drop would be seen in time and then minimize the amount of damage we are already getting into the pathogen glands so wow pathogen gland research 11 minutes into this game also going into hive tech 11 minutes into this game very very fast zerg teching here once the infestation pit is about halfway or sorry infestation pit is about halfway done researching um that uh, pathogen glands we should start seeing the training of some of those infestors as well as the hellions try to rush their way in against those roaches roaches now battling it out able to get some damage and now siege tanks bringing it up the rear as well the roaches are going to be able to move much more quickly on that creep and now scanner sweep's going to reveal but zerglings and roaches battling it out over here not going to be a very very fair fight at all infestors are now currently being um, morphed in or not yeah just being trained now as wow I'm not sure what happened. This may have been a disconnect. I hate it when that happens, especially in such a good series like this. Um, I'm not sure who won. Army-wise at this stage, 3,500 versus 1,375. Um, there are a lot of Marines. The Marines could easily push into either location. If they pushed into here, there would be a lot of drones to take down. But then that would give a lot of time for the Infestors um, to come out and then cast that Fungal Growth. But there is also a large number of Siege Tanks as well. Based upon pure army size, I would have to give the game to cloud um taking a look at production yeah there's not that much in production only two infestors and two zerglings so yeah i will i will just have to say that cloud won this game and was able to um, tie it up so yeah disconnects not my favorite way of casting games um especially when it doesn't say who has left the game 
um, for me to try to guess and wonder who um, actually uh, who actually won in this particular tournament. Yeah, it's a tournament, right? Yeah, it is a tournament as there are a lot of um, a lot of viewers. So yeah, don't know what to tell you. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Sorry that you guys didn't get to see um, a really, really great game in between these two players, but I'm pretty sure Cloud would have just been able to uh, move out with these Marines and these Siege Tanks. I know there's not that many Medivacs with only one Medivac in the air, but it doesn't really matter as those Marines will soon, soon be upgraded 1-0 and also have um, that Combat Shield giving an additional 10 hit points. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.